Hello and good morning. It's Phil Thatch and I'm here at Harrison Bay State Park, one of my favorite places to come and do wildlife photography. And you know, it's springtime now, so my favorite place to go is Camping Area C during the winter, but it is full of campers now. So I'm still riding around and looking for things to photograph. Today I've brought my Canon R6 and the crazy I like to call it crazy, the crazy 800 millimeter F11, which is pretty cool on the R6, but if they make that rumored R7 APS-C camera, it is going to be amazing. Uh, so my plan for the 800 is to use it for birds, small birds. And then I also brought the 100 to 500 lens with me, which so far I haven't used but that 800 millimeter lens would be much too much if I ran across a deer. So I, got, I can switch quickly to the 100 to 500 and do photographs of deer with it because it will be a great deer lens with that uh, focal range. So I started out this morning and uh, the first thing I ran across was some chipping sparrows and I followed chipping sparrows around on this hill for I don't know, 15 minutes, and they would not sit still. About the time I would get them in the frame and start to get them in focus, it would hop. Uh, so in that 15 minutes, I might've gotten one, maybe two decent pictures. So let's take a look at those. All right, here are a few of those Chipping Sparrow photographs, and these are basically the best of the worst. This day started off uh, as really not going too well for me in terms of bird photography, but this is proof, uh, this video will be proof that if you stick with it, maybe things will get better. So here are two or three Chipping Sparrow photographs and also during that section of the morning I made this photograph of a northern mockingbird with fairly decent golden hour light on it. And after the Chipping Sparrows I continued to ride around and I came to this location right here which is kind of the parking lot for the tennis courts. and. Uh, I had, uh, Heather and I had made some shots here one time before and I was kind of rolling out because uh, I, I wasn't having much luck and I looked over at this tree right here and there was a uh, male eastern bluebird in that tree. So I tried to get a shot of, uh, but I, I wasn't in the best location and then I came right around to where I'm shooting right out the window with, with uh, fairly decent sun and um, a red-headed woodpecker came up and landed at the bottom of that big tree right there. And it stayed there for a long time. I, I made a video clip uh, with the 800, which I think is gonna be pretty cool, and some photos of it. So let's take a look at those. Well, things are looking up. Look at this beautiful red-headed woodpecker. A lot of times when I find these, their red feathers on their head are not fully perfect, but this one was the best condition redheaded woodpecker. And look, you can see the tongue of the bird sticking there into the crack in the bark as it's trying to feed. Beautiful, beautiful bird, this redheaded woodpecker. Here it is, still on that same tree, but it's moved around some, and I like this shot with it looking backwards behind it. Just a beautiful bird, and I was so fortunate to have an opportunity to photograph it. This is the square crop version that I decided to share on Instagram because you know square crops are best for Instagram. But I think this shot that happened in the very next frame when the bird leaned back some is probably my favorite of the shots when the bird was in some pretty decent sunlight. And this one is more conducive to be seen on YouTube. And now here is some video that I made with the 800 F11. And I really think that lens is going to be great for wildlife video. This is just hanging the lens out the window of the car and making this 4K clip. I'm still rolling around that same parking lot and I heard some bird activity over here uh, in another area of the parking lot, kind of a 90 degree angle from the previous area I was at. And I heard some bird activity and I saw a small bird on a branch in a tree and I said, and it was making some noises and I pointed the 800 at it and I thought that it was a, a baby or a fledgling um, Eastern Bluebird. That, that's what I thought it was. And I, I made some photographs of it and I couldn't, it was, I was struggling to get a decent photo because the light was bad. 
and all of a sudden a, a bird came up to feed it, but the bird that came to feed it was a chipping sparrow, which is about half the size of that bird. Uh, now I've heard of um, cowbirds, I think it's cowbirds will, will uh, lay their eggs in other birds' nests and then the other bird will take care of them, but I've never heard of that with an eastern bluebird. Uh, so anyway, I don't know what the fledgling bird was, but I got a photograph of it being fed by a, a tiny chipping sparrow. So let's look at those. All right, so at the time that I made that clip, I didn't know what this youngster was, but now I'm pretty sure it's a brown-headed cowbird, and it is being raised in the way that brown-headed cowbirds often are, and that is being placed into the nest of another bird and being raised by that other bird. And it's so funny to me that this tiny chipping sparrow is feeding that huge, by comparison, brown-headed cowbird fledgling. Uh, the feeding picture wasn't perfectly in focus, but I really like the way this particular shot turned out right here. You know, I was just thinking about this 800 millimeter lens and how, you know, it, it, it's an F11, it doesn't autofocus nearly as fast or as accurately as the 100 to 500. The 100 to 500 does a much better job, but on full frame I need more horsepower uh, than that. So I'm going to have to continue this point later. As I was rolling along and blabbering about lenses, I noticed this beautiful eastern kingbird on the other side of the road and I had to stop and make a photograph of it. I thought it turned out really well and it was in great light. Just a beautiful bird and there are more of these to come. So like I was saying before I stumbled across those eastern kingbirds, this lens doesn't focus as well and as quickly as the 100 to 500, but the 100 to 500 doesn't have enough focal length to be awesome on a full frame camera, but that takes me back to that R7. Man, I'm so excited about that R7. I sure hope they make it because if they do, you know, I'm used to Nikon, which has a 1.5 crop, where a 500 millimeter lens gives you a 750. But Canon typically has a 1.6 crop on their APS-C cameras. So I would think that that would be what the rumored R7 will have. And if so, then the 100 to 500 becomes an 800. And you'll get, uh, you know, this one, this, this 800 millimeter lens does not you can't focus all over the screen, just a much smaller area, uh, kind of not much bigger than my head is in the frame right now, um, is where you can focus. But with the 100 to 500, you can focus all over the screen. So that will be an 800 millimeter lens that is much more effective than the one I'm using today. And then, I think it's 1280, I can't remember the math, but the uh, 800 times 1.6, I'll put whatever that math is on the screen right now. Uh, this lens, which doesn't focus as well, will be amazing for really, really small things. And it's already pretty cool for it, but you know, I'm used to this amount of focal length, 800. I've, I've used my 500 f4 and a 1.4 teleconverter and a 1.5 uh, APS-C sensor for a long time. So I'm, I'm used to actually more focal length than this 800 but I sold that big lens. So anyway, there's some thoughts on, wow, I can't wait till the R7 comes out. If it comes out, I shall probably order it on the day it's announced. I took a moment and hiked around this little trail behind me. It goes kind of all the way around an area that's surrounded with water. And, you know, I, I heard a kingfisher a couple times, saw it a couple times, but could not get close enough to make a shot. And let me just give a shout out to my buddy, David Sailors. He went down to Costa Rica and got lots of kingfisher shots. And, and you know, I, I don't know if David actually even knows this, but to me, uh, if you can get a shot of a kingfisher, it's kind of a feather in your cap. So good on him. Make sure to watch uh, both of David Sailors Costa Rica videos because he's got lots of amazing bird photography he did with his 500 PF. Uh, but anyway, I walked around this trail and I, I, I failed to get the kingfisher shot, but I also saw, um, what did I see? I saw a chipping sparrow and I got a really bad picture of a tufted titmouse. And then I saw this other bird. I don't know exactly what that thing is. It's, it's kind of shaped like a mockingbird, but there's a little bit of yellow to it. And 
it's a little bit smaller than a mockingbird. So I, I really don't know what it is. And my photograph of it, while I think it's pretty much in focus, it's 25,600 ISO. So I'm not sure if I'll share it with you or not. And I'll be embarrassed if it's a mockingbird, which it may well be. But uh, let's look at some pictures from my little hike around this area behind me. All right, well, the first bird that I spotted as I was walking around that area was this spotted sandpiper, which is pretty unusual to see around this area. Apparently, they only just kind of go through here during migration. And I made this video clip. My daughter said it looked like it was twerking. I love the way this thing walks. And this is uh, handheld with the 800 millimeter lens. Made a photograph also as I was walking around that area of a turtle. I thought it turned out pretty nice. I love the eyes of a turtle. A lot of times they have a really nice sparkle to their eyes. And now we're getting into the high ISO area. This is a chipping sparrow on a branch, not much light, and 10,000 ISO, which the combination of the R6 and Topaz Denoise AI handles pretty well. Here's a 16,000 ISO shot of a tufted titmouse there in the woods. And this is the mystery bird. It turns out it's a immature pine warbler. And these two shots, this one and the next one, are both at 25,600 ISO. And again, the R6 files are pretty smooth to start with. And I also cleaned them up some more with Topaz Denoise AI. And of course, no trip to Harrison Bay State Park would be complete without a photograph of a squirrel. And I thought this little rascal was pretty cute as it stood there near the lake in some grass. While I was making that video clip just now, I noticed a couple of cardinals that looked like a male and a female were kind of hanging around down near this concrete picnic table. So I got the, the, uh, I got the camera out and I decided I'd come over here and and try to get a photograph of them. Or maybe it was this picnic table, one of these. And of course, by the time I got up here at the edge of the parking lot, they flew off as I expected them to, but I figured I'd give it a shot anyway. But I came on down, they flew into this tree and I came on down and I sat here at the picnic table and the male was on the branch and the female flew up next to it on the branch, just, just there. And I believe it wasn't a female, or maybe it was a female. I believe it was a juvenile, like a fledgling. And I got a photograph of the male feeding it. So how cool is that? I'm not really sure if the bird on the left is a juvenile being fed or a female involved in some sort of mating ritual, but I love this photograph. And I also love the bokeh in the background created by the 800 f11. I ended up shooting today exclusively with the 800 millimeter f11 lens. You know, it, it does not focus as well as the 100 to 500, which I also carried. But right now, even though the difficulty level is higher shooting with the 100 to 500, for bird photography of this type, really small birds, the, the 800 is just a much better choice. Uh, I think the 100 to 500 is going to be awesome when the R7 hopefully comes out, but for right now, I recommend using the 800 for bird photography of this type. Uh, you know, and I don't understand the 600 because, I mean, don't get me wrong, I've never used it, but it seems like it would have the same difficulties as the 800 without the benefit of the huge horsepower of 800 millimeters. You know, it's also an F11 lens, shadow, but it is just not gonna be as powerful, but it's still an F11, so you get all the, the uh, problems of the 800 without the benefit of the 800. I guess one good thing about it is it's, it's the cheapest bird photography lens you can get for the Canon RF system. It is a couple hundred dollars cheaper than the already ridiculously inexpensive 800. Let me just interrupt myself right here and say that I've chatted with a couple of viewers who have purchased the 600 F11 and they're both extraordinarily happy with their lens and I'm sure it is fantastic. Now I personally would probably always pick the 800 for 200 more but I hear the 600 is really great. I was making that clip just now where I was kind of talking about my philosophy in terms of the Canon 
RF lenses for bird photography and I walk past this birdhouse right here labeled number two in this field and it has tree swallows in it. So I believe I'm gonna go get the 800 and see if I can get a shot of them. Okay, so I was actually completely ready for this video to be done. I had done all the photography I thought that I needed and then I ran across those tree swallows but when I went to make photographs of the tree swallows, I didn't get any. When I went back down to birdhouse number two, there were no tree swallows out, but I started to notice a bunch of other birds. You've already seen an eastern kingbird, and now here is the second photograph of a chipping sparrow. Now that big field used to be have tall grass in it, but they did like a controlled burn, and you can see lots of the trees that these birds are perched on. You can see where they have been in a fire. And when they first did that, I thought, oh man, what in the world are they doing? But now the result, I'm not sure how many months later, is a field that is absolutely full of birds. Here's another eastern kingbird. And I love the yellow wildflowers in the background. I think that's absolutely beautiful. And these are more examples of how beautiful the bokeh is on that 800 millimeter f11 lens. And look at that beautiful eastern kingbird. Just one of my favorite flycatchers. And you get to see them quite a bit around this area this time of year. There's another one, another eastern kingbird there with a beautiful bokefied background from an f11 lens, no less. And here's one more eastern kingbird. And once again, it's standing there in that field. And I think there were like six or so of them flying around that field, which is the most eastern kingbirds I've ever seen in one location. And this is the final eastern kingbird photograph. Just a beautiful bird to shoot. Thanks for joining me for another video from right here at beautiful Harrison Bay State Park. I really recommend this place highly. It's one of my favorite places and I'm so fortunate because I can get here in about five minutes from my house. But uh, I think it's worth a drive. If you need to drive a couple hours to get here, it's worth the visit. There's even a pretty good restaurant here and they even serve beer and they carry the best beer in the world. Chattanooga Brewing's Chestnut Street Brown Ale. Thanks for watching. Have a great day. I look forward to seeing you in the next one. Bye-bye.